Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome to Pro Football Weekly. We are down to the final two weeks of the regular season. I am Pat Boyle, joined by our three wise men, former Bear and NFL Network analyst Tom Waddle, the Hall of Famer Dan Hampton, the publisher and editor of Pro Football Weekly, Hub Arkish. Guys, each and every week, the football's great. Usually. Yes, usually. But there are some distractions along the way. Who's had more distractions this year, the Vikings or, say, the Jets? I would have to say the Vikings. Both teams, lots of distractions. But I would have to say the Vikings. Any team that has had Brett Favre attached to them this year, True. the bubble collapses. You have Randy Moss. You don't have Randy Moss. Brad Childress gets fired. And, of course, the saga that has been Brett Favre. I would say the Vikings. Maybe the Jets. Now really? with the latest with the foot fetish. And, you know, in the week that I wanted to see mistletoe, not the other kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when the roof falls in on you, you probably are the winner. And yeah, as far as the Rex Ryan, it's him and his wife. I, I mean, it's a little weird, but but I don't really think it's that big a deal, to be float, honest with you. Whatever yeah. floats your boat. Something them. tells hey, me, though, yeah. that Dan Hampton's got a holstered gun full of oh. Jets jokes. You know. At his ready. You know. <laughs> Over the next 30 minutes, we will preview all the big matchups this week, including our game of the week. The Falcons look to wrap up the top seed in the NFC as they host the Saints. The guys will give us their pick on every game. We'll bring you exclusive insider's information in the way we hear it reports, and we'll get you ready for what's likely your Fantasy League Championship game with the best Week 16 matchups. But we uh, get our feet wet on this show with oh. the Jets visiting the Bears. Chicago was the first team to clinch a division. They did it last week, knocking out Mr. Drama, Brett Favre, in that game as they skated on the frozen pond in Minneapolis. Meanwhile, Rex Ryan's crew won at Pittsburgh last week, but they can't afford to stub their toe this week oh. at Soldier Field. They need to win to secure their second straight playoff appearance hub. What do the insiders say? What's their fetish, if you will? The only relevant part about the story, guys, is multiple players have reported that Rex Ryan did apologize to his team Friday morning. He called it an embarrassing personal situation. It's real. I think really that's where it stops. There's nothing more than that to it. The bigger story is Mark Sanchez. Bum shoulder. Weren't sure if he could go. We're hearing he's going to go, but will he be 100% against this Bears defense in the questionable weather conditions in Chicago? For the Chicago Bears, it's real simple, guys. How focused are they, and can that offensive line handle the blitz packages and the pressure that Rex Ryan is sure to bring. I'm going to leave the jokes to Dan Hampton. Uh, look, I'll, I'll look at the football, and this should be a very good battle between two teams that play excellent defense and are explosive on the special teams front. I think the game comes down to which offense is able to create something. And for the Jets, it's, it's all about Mark Sanchez, who is still struggling, and this is second year in the National Football League. The Jets can run the football. Sixth-ranked rushing attack in the league, but Sanchez in this game is going to have to make some throws. As I mentioned, wildly inconsistent. Better last week against the Steelers, guys, but he hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in three weeks. Hasn't gotten a ton of help from his wide receivers, but he has been inconsistent to say the least. I saw an interesting stat this week. In games where the temperature is 45 degrees or less or there's some precipitation, Mark Sanchez has thrown just four touchdowns to 17 interceptions. I think it's more likely that Mark Sanchez makes a crucial mistake than it is Jay Cutler. I like the home team in this game, the Bears. Well, and I, and I tell you what, there's a lot of reasons to like the Bears. And a lot of people saying poo-poo to the Hoos and saying, no, this 10-4 and 4 Bears team is not that good and not really a contender. Well, maybe you need to look under the hood a little bit, a little bit better with that offensive line who has gotten much, much better over the course of the last month and a half of the season. They're going to have to be to stop that fifth-ranked Jets defense who like to come at different quarterbacks with a variation of that always is trying to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback to make mistakes. Not only that, but Jay Cutler has been better with the football this year, avoiding a lot of the bad throws and making more and better decisions, getting it out to his receivers like Devin Hester and Earl Bennett and Johnny Knox. Now, the one thing about this is this Jet defense does not have the pass rushers that I remember them having a year ago. And you know what, Calvin Pace is maybe the most athletic one, but overall, this is not a scary Jet defense. Maybe the Bears can get them blocked. I don't think so. I think that more importantly, the Jets have to have this. I'm taking this as a desperation pick for New York. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm not sure the Jets are better than the Bears. I think these teams are pretty close. But the Bears did something last Monday night that nobody thought they were going to do. They punched their playoff ticket. Now, they still want the week off. They need to win here. But coming off the short week in that celebration, I just think the Jets are more desperate. Only time's going with the Bears and basically a pick em affair. Pat, I'd say we more than kicked it around in the first segment, didn't we? You, you did not. Just put our toe in the water. You did not tiptoe around any topic there, Tom, as we had to break. Let's